Hollywood. The word screams American cinema, which has had a large global effect on the film industry since the early 20th century. Various genres of film were born from Hollywood, including comedy, drama, action, romance, the musical, horror, science fiction, and many more. In the 1970s, films like The Godfather 2001 A Space Odyssey and Star Wars gave way to the modern blockbuster, encouraging studios to focus on creating enormous hits every time. To accompany these blockbusters, bombastic and energetic film scores were utilized to accompany the on-screen action, and this has become a staple in today's categorization of the term Hollywood sound. A company that has tried to preserve this unique sound and recording approach is CineSamples. Created in 2007 by Mike Patty and Mike Berry, they focused their efforts on creating orchestral sample libraries that capture the sweet tone heard in countless films. From the full orchestra to some more unique libraries, CineSamples quickly became a leader in the industry, always open to feedback and suggestions and producing libraries accordingly for the market. In today's video, we'll take a look at what the company has to offer and some personal favorites of mine that I use on a near daily basis. If you want to dive a little deeper into how I use these libraries and some of my other recommendations categorized in a digestible and easy to follow manner, feel free to download my free sample library buyer's guide in the description box below. You can think of this guide as a little pocketbook of sorts. So if you're on the market for a new sample library and you want to see if I recommend it, then this is the perfect resource. Just click the first link in the description box and you can grab it right away. All right, let's dive in. Let's begin with the vision of the company. The very first library they ever produced was called Cineharp, now Cineharps. The cine prefix, meaning cinematic, gives you a great idea of what the samples are all about and how they're supposed to sound. They followed this up with Hollywood Winds, one of my favorite libraries ever, which features pre-recorded runs, trills, motifs, tremolos, effects, playable patches, and so much more. This library gives you that instant John Williams sound and is truly a staple in many composers' templates to this day. Their next large library was the birth of the Cine Symphony series, Cinebrass Core. This library became a fan favorite very quickly, mainly due to its clear, resonant, and bright tone recorded in the Sony scoring stage in Los Angeles, California. They followed this up with Cinebrass Pro, which is essentially a brand new library containing more soloists, a larger dynamic range overall, and some unique effects not found within the core library. They've stuck with this library structure ever since for the Cine Symphony lineup, including the winds, strings, and percussion. The percussion library specifically, called Cineperk, is a beast, essentially containing four libraries in one and serving as a true workhorse percussion library for traditional and epic cinematic percussion. The core of my percussion template is entirely Cineperk and it never fails to deliver that beautiful sound that I'm always looking for. Since then, they've worked on filling out the rest of the orchestra, including the updated Cineharps, Cinepiano, Cineharpsichord, and many others. They've also collaborated with world-renowned musicians such as Tina Guo, Randy Kerber, and Taylor Davis on their own specialty libraries, which add a nice variety to the more traditionally symphonic samples on offer. CineSample's latest venture is called Musio, a subscription service catering to the composer who may not own too many CineSample's libraries already. For a monthly fee, you essentially have access to most of CineSample's catalog, and it's relatively simple to download and start playing your instrument of choice right away. This is very similar to East West Composer Cloud, who revolutionized the idea of subscriptions for samples and has seen quite a lot of success using this model. Aside from this, CineSamples has always hired union players for their libraries and pays consistent royalties to these performers who made the libraries what they are today. This is still quite rare in today's landscape of sample library developers, and it'll be interesting and encouraging to see if other companies start paying their musicians royalties for contributing their talents. All in all, Cinebrass, Cinepiano, Hollywood Winds, Cineharps, and Cineperk are staples in my projects, and they've become a go-to libraries for that crisp, clean, and bright Hollywood sound. Speaking of sound, we already talked about that open and clear quality to the samples, but a large part of this is due to the recording and mixing setup. Q. Dennis Sands, a recording and mixing engineer best known for his work on Avengers Endgame, Ready Player One, and Forrest Gump. Dennis was responsible for setting up the microphones and their positions in the Sony scoring stage for the best results, and the resulting signals contain a perfect blend of detail and room sound. 
The Senna Symphony libraries typically come shipped with a full Dennis Sands mix out of the box, which essentially represents Dennis' preferred microphone mix. And it's the position that I tend to use 99% of the time in my productions. Otherwise, you still have the typical microphone positions, but labeled in more layman's terms, such as dry and close, roomy, ambient, mid-mix, and bright JW or John Williams. It's kind of a cool way to present our choices, and I find the roomy or ambient positions best for the percussion, especially when you want them to sit further back in the hall and complement the rest of the orchestra appropriately. That being said though, I still find myself using the Dennis Sands mix by default, and mix the rest of my libraries from different developers around this mix mic. For example, Cinematic Studio Series tends to be on the drier side, so I'll add a little bit of extra reverb on the strings and the woodwinds to complement the Cine Symphony series. Overall, the unmistakable sound and tone of the CineSamples libraries are what draw most composers back to them, and it'll be really fun to see where CineSamples takes the orchestra next. Let's talk about pricing. CineSamples tends to sit on the middle to upper range when it comes to prices in comparison with other developers. Looking at CineStrings, CineWinds, CineBrass, and CinePerk, they're priced at $529, $429, $429, and $749 respectively. They also do have discounted bundles that incentivize purchases, but when comparing individual libraries, the prices do have quite a range. They also have freebies on offer to pull you into the CineSamples ecosystem, and if you want to go a little deeper, some of the more niche libraries range from tens of dollars to a few hundred dollars. They also offer a generous 50% educational discount to students that can be taken advantage of in April and October of each year. I'd highly recommend picking up some of the bundles as that's where you'll save the most money, but you might as well take advantage of the student discount if you can as well. All to say, there's something for everyone here, so even if you can't afford the most comprehensive libraries, you can get started with the cheaper or even free offerings. Moving on to workflow, CineSamples has a very unique patch and GUI structure. In terms of presentation, you're greeted with the microphone positions and faders out of the box with separate tabs for mapping and other settings. When I was first getting into sample libraries, it took me a while to work out what was happening as some of the mic positions didn't quite work properly, so this situation will most likely be fixed in the upcoming revamps of the Cine Symphony lineup. In terms of the patches themselves, they're typically sorted into articulation patches and true legato patches. The articulation patches combine multiple short note lengths and sustains or legato into one patch, whereas the true legato patch simply contains the legato without any other articulations. This gives you the flexibility of having all necessary articulations in one patch, or just legato to save on CPU processing and RAM. The downside to this approach, however, is that they can only basically fit shorts and longs into these articulation patches, and any effects patches that are typically separated into their own patches, which may not be a downside if you prefer working this way with separate articulation patches. The short note lengths are also triggered by velocity, with the shortest notes activated when playing lightly and the longest when pressing hard, and the dynamics are triggered by the mod wheel. Of course, this can be reassigned, but I would have personally loved to have both the dynamics and the short note lengths assigned to velocity, and then have the sustains in their own separate patch entirely to avoid any crossover. This isn't a deal breaker by any means, but this workflow is something to keep in mind when you open the libraries out of the box. Finally, let's talk about outreach and marketing. I've always found CineSamples marketing approach very laid back, open, and casual, thanks to Mike Patty's approachable demeanor on camera. They certainly have demos and trailers on their website, but the walkthroughs are always transparent and you get a great sense of what the instruments sound like raw out of the box. Mike is also known for his live composition screencasts in which he uses CineSamples instruments to compose a cue in one take. It's a wonderful way to not only share your composing and orchestration process, but also promote your own products as well. Mike Berry has also done some wonderful orchestration tutorials, while Tim Starnes has done some dedicated mixing tutorials for CineSamples as well. Funny enough, I've also done a small feature on the CineSamples channel as well, so you really get a sense that they're trying to give as much as they can to the composing community and widen their reach. They also put a lot of marketing resources into the aforementioned Museo, making it as easy as possible to get into the CineSamples ecosystem for a low investment. At the same time, they're still developing libraries for contact, so they're ensuring that there's truly something for everyone and that no one gets left behind. CineSamples has won many hearts around the world due to the quality of their samples and their inviting approach. It'll be interesting to see where they go from here, and what they continue to develop in the future both for Museo and for Contact. 
As I mentioned previously, much of my template is comprised of Cine samples, so you know that I'm a fan and I'm rooting for their progress and development wherever it's headed. The libraries work, they sound great, and the team consistently takes feedback into account for future updates. Again, if you want to learn more about some of my favorite Cine samples libraries, I'd highly recommend you download my sample library buyer's guide. I'm consistently updating it with my new favorites, so you'll always get a sense of what I enjoy using and how I use them. It's 100% free, so you can download it instantly by clicking the first link in the description box. Thanks again, and if you want to check out my thoughts on another amazing company, for example, Orchestral Tools, you can check out that video right here. We'll cover similar aspects to this video, and you can create an informed decision on whether or not their products are a good fit for you. Thanks so much, and take care.